Well, in 1979, I was on my way back from Limerick. As I came in my door, my phone was ringing, and it was a colleague saying, how are we going to deal with this legalising contraception? There was a, a lawyer in Merrion Square called Jerry O'Mahony, and he invited me and a whole lot of others who were involved similarly, but in different organisations, to a meeting. And there we discussed it. What could we do to stop abortion coming in to the country? The particular group in the early 80s, a relatively small group at that time, became very powerful in almost every parish in the country. And they uh, decided to launch a campaign for a referendum. My brain worked very politically. And the very thought, and I don't know who came up with it, I said, that is it. We'll get something into the Constitution, and if there ever is a, uh, an effort to legalise abortion, at least the Irish people will be consulted. From this one idea, one of the most powerful and effective lobbying groups in Irish history was formed, the Pro-Life Amendment Campaign. Plaque formed in response to the legalisation of contraception and the establishment of a women's right to choose group in Ireland. So when the idea of a constitutional ban on abortion was first mooted, we were kind of like, well, why would you need that? Abortion is already very illegal here. I think it was going to make the, going to make the, the task of the campaigners for abortion easier if it wasn't there. You had the 1861 Act in Britain when they enacted it, and the 1861 Act is still the law. But the Abortion Act 1967, which allows practically abortion on demand, is an exception to it. A very big exception, I might say. When we heard that, you know, people saying that it was because the Women's Right to Choose group existed, that they thought that they needed this constitutional amendment, because, like, we were a lovely group of people and we were, like, we had great, you know, great discussions and stuff like that, but we weren't, you know, it was only 10 or 12 of us, we were not about to change the world, we certainly weren't about to change the abortion law. The pro-life group decided, a very articulate group, very clever group, to put the fear of God into every politician in Ireland about the issue of abortion. The Dáil deputies in government and in opposition, they knew perfectly well that their seats would be in complete jeopardy if they opposed the pro-life movement and the idea of a referendum. I cannot emphasize enough how establishment plaque were. They were like, they had links into the highest levels, you know, in, in society, you know, in, in every, in the legal profession, medical profession, etc., and, and a lot of money. We were very pleased that we'd had such a, a favourable um, reception from the politicians, because there was very strong support for our view that uh, we, we did not want to have abortion in Ireland. We wanted to protect the unborn life. My brother was a TD and also a member of the European Parliament. He had been a minister in a previous government when Liam Cosgrove was Taoiseach. Now, I would go in nearly every day because we had an office in Mount Merriam, in, yes, Merriam Street, and I'd go in every day and I'd meet the different TDs I would explain to them what it was about. There's no doubt that the Fianna Fáil organisation at head office level and right through the country gave full access to, of their organisation to the pro-life people. There was a virtually, in many areas, a joint campaign. With these financial and political advantages, the amendment campaign was massively tilted in Plaque's favour. We travelled the country wide. And my greatest memory of that was we never had to stay in a hotel or guest house. The people were open arms, 
receiving us. The pro-life amendment campaign had massive support. Like you know, that also has an end of finance. They were able to do, and the, the fantastic leaflets they were able to produce. The posters they were able. We couldn't. We hadn't the money to produce posters. They had open public meetings, and there was no problem with them having meetings. Whereas we, like, we couldn't get anyone to give us a public place to have a meeting because people, not because they didn't. And I wanted to emphasise the fact there was support for us out there, but people were intimidated into not supporting, not showing their support. There were two different wings within the pro-life movement, PLAC and the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. I suppose it's always been the case, I think, with the anti-abortion movement, um, that there's like a group that's kind of more respectable and a group that's kind of more like the street soldiers. The SPUC, the Society for Protection of Unborn Children, was an English organisation and this, they came over and helped us. They were a great help. But they were going along simultaneously, going around the country, and we hadn't realised it. So when we discovered it, that this campaign was going on, it was wonderful. They were showing films of aborted babies and what they did in England and so on. Yes, well, I remember the Beatles and St. George being put up on the, on the pulpit, like, or put up on the platform for people to see in that. Well, it's very difficult comments in, like, in the small towns and that, because the, the the priests and uh, nuns and spoke and the different groups had built up this, like if you were some sort of pariah, like you're an awful human being. Like I have memories of words like killers, uh, baby killers being thrown at you. And those people were very, very kind of angry and very cross. And I think looking back on it now, full of fear and not really sure of what was happening. And of course, those people were all people who were going to church and who were being given a particular message. And we felt that our role was to try and to give the other side and to talk to the other side. We got some very, very strong abuse, like at the doors, like people throwing their leaflets back into our faces and things like that, like, you know. And and then I was supposed to the situations I saw in several lawns and album where somebody opened the door, but I said, I don't know who it was, and threw a stone at me, hit me in the back of the head. Two years after the formation of Plaque, Ireland went to the polls to insert a pro-life amendment into the Constitution. i never seen anything like the poll in the day of 83. i never witnessed anything like that in all my life, and I have a long time experience of canvassing and working in, in politics, like in the thing. There were both loads of people coming from all the institutions controlled by the Catholics, the old people's homes, the mental institutions, the various um, young people, uh, people who, who could vote were brought. All the institutions were emptied and they were busted in on the day. The result was a foregone conclusion. The right to life of the unborn child was now equal to that of a woman. We had warned that there would be censorship resulting from putting the amendment into the Constitution. We had warned that women might die. We had warned that, warned that women would be stopped travelling to England. And the powers that be all said, no, none of that will happen. Everything will go on the same as it has been, except that we won't be able to legislate for abortion. I think it's been of great benefit to Ireland I think Ireland uh, has uh, escaped what has gone on in some of our neighbouring countries where the whole abortion business is, is really out of control. To me it's a sad issue. I don't think I became a doctor to kill patients and to me the unborn is a patient. I'll never forget, as long as I live, as Minister for Health being told that a woman in a public voluntary hospital in Ireland, that she was denied cancer treatment uh, because the hospital were afraid that it would damage the fetus. The woman died in agony, I know that. As minister, I was told that. And the child didn't survive either. You know, our, our Hippocratic Oath, which we all took in graduation, was first do no harm. And I think abortion is doing a lot of harm to a lot of women. It's totally different now. It's totally different now. I think the Catholic Church has completely lost its moral authority. But I would say that the big difference is just how angry women are about years of having to protest this nonsense and about ye of years and years and years of being treated like slabs of meat in, in maternity hospitals and feeling that you know their bodies aren't, aren't their own. 
think that women have found their voices.